Okay? Now put the big in that corner. All right? And then give me three guys to stack those in. All right? So we get to this out of different initial actions, but we'll also sometimes, just to simplify, we'll come down the floor and do this. We call this Dane or Dane Lillard. Our guys like Dane Lillard. Sometimes good to name stuff after uh, good players. So, in fact, Coach Baby. Coach, I still remember the pro moves, all right? So Coach did a great thing when I was in school, all right? We had 10, we called the pro moves, all right? This is innovative for me as a 14-year-old. He attached Michael Jordan to one move, Magic Johnson to another move, Isaiah Thomas. I still have it written out on a piece of paper, all right? So that, that was really good. So we still do that. We, now this place called Danny because he's a good pro, all right? So what we do, if you got a really, really good player, that's a good ball hand, a good shooter, this is good. Flash him up, up the sideline, you gotta give yourself a little bit of space, obviously, so you're not tipped on the sideline. And now, you're either gonna hit, which again is a ball screen, you're gonna twist, which here you twist it to the middle, you're gonna get, where you show both hands, go back, which is a really good one. All right, show both hands, hit him. Fly off of it, all right? Those are the three main ones we do a day, okay? But either way, okay, come on and hit four. Now when we do that, come on, use it. Uh, use it to the outside. So let's say you set that one, okay? You're rolling, okay? You're filling behind, all right? You're reading the cut. By the way, simple rule we have on cutting. It supersedes all the rules. If your man can't see you cut, You'd be amazed, or you guys probably wouldn't be amazed if you see the same thing. In college basketball, how much of the time weak side defenders can't see their man? They're just staring at the ball. So if you can't see, you cut. All right? But let's say we throw it back here. All right? Uh, what we do immediately in this situation, okay, is you're cut through. All right? And now we get to a two man action over here. All right? So you guys are just playing. So go back. Let me be you. Up top. Yeah, I like to jump in. Oh, I'm getting hooked. All right. So when I hit, again, if I pass it, bunch of different options here. I can go hit for him. All right, this is a good time to go to that Bruce right here. They're going to switch because we're both guards. Boom, I can look at that. Okay, go back. I can slide, which means I pass it. I'm screening. No, I'm not. All right, so you can drive that, get two on the ball, throw it back. All right? Or I can just deep cut. I can just cut through to create space for you. One of the biggest revelations that our guys in Texas had, and they figured this out finally after a while, is if there's bad spacing, then create space. So in other words, he doesn't have a lot of space to drive middle right now, but now he does. Okay? So through a cut, create space for your teammate. And if you look at the majority of your drives that you create, it's because somebody did a good thing, whether it's through screen action or cutting, to create space. So start from the beginning. Run that day again. All right? So we're gonna, you're going to come off, you're going to attack downhill, you're going to roll, we're going to throw it to the fill back, to the fill behind, you're going to cut on that triple side, and then you guys are going to play. All right, go. Good. Go. Good. 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 So we do a ton, a ton of two on two, three on three, four on four, where these guys are switching. And now it's going to be how good can we be offensively, playing against the switch, and then defensively on the switch. Um, in college basketball, like the teams that are really good at that on defense have a huge advantage because they can be versatile. The teams on offense that can take advantage of the switch, those guys rip people up. Um, it also gives you an opportunity to create the matchups that you want. A uh, couple of other ones. We set a lot of flat pick rolls. So get the middle, my point guard. All right. Go one, four, flat. One, four, flat. So give me five right there, you're perfect. Okay. Give me another guy to block on offense. Get right with him. And again, if they, and I don't know in high school how many people do this, how many people don't. But if they want to come out and guard you out here, then let's come out and screen them out here. We tell our guys all the time, the further out 
we can set the screen if they want to guard us, the more space we're going to have behind us to make the play. So this is about as simple as it gets. We call it number two, three, four, or five. And we say up. Oh. All right, and whoever it is comes in touch. There's a white line on our court, kind of like this beige line right here that goes all the way down the middle of the court. So they come touch our white line, and then they're running up and set it. And so basically it turns into a lot of times an ace pick and roll. So you come up five up. You get out. Go. Send it to his left. Send him left. I'm left. Perfect. Come off of it. Roll. All right. Wishbone. Come on. Weak side window. All right. So again, it, it, it's the same type of action, just from a different angle. All right. And now when we throw it back, all right, the whole goal of everything we do on offense is to create a closeout. So if we threw it back, go back to where you were. Let's say you were helping on the roll for a second. Give it to us. All right. Throw it back here. Pop it in. All right, if that creates a closeout, then that's what we want. All right, so now it's about how good can we be attacking the closeout. And if you go back and you watch all your games where you scored a lot of points from the last several years, all right, remember Coach Baby, we had it going in that regional final game back in 1994, okay? I guarantee you go back and watch games where we scored a lot of points. It's because you created a lot of closeouts. You had a lot of closeouts in those games. And then you guys either made threes or they did a heck of a job attacking closeouts to get the paint. So for us, if we had to boil it down to one thing on offense, if I told our guys, hey, you only remember one thing, it would be we've got to create closeouts and this system, this screening action, the movement that we have is all based on creating closeouts. I haven't found a way yet to objectively quantify it, all right, because is it a closeout if it comes from here to there? Is that long enough? Is it there? So I'm not sure exactly. If, there's nothing worse than subjective stats. All right? But if there's any way you can measure it from game to game, it will go a long way to your offensive efficiency. Um, let's see. We talked about, let's go back. Put the the empty over there. I want to show you guys another thing that's down against the ice. All right? You guys have all seen this, I'm sure. We three guys over there, okay? So we call this crack action, crack, all right? Um, and we don't really do it just coming down the floor and getting into it, but just in the interest of time, I'll show it to you from the empty, all right? And it's very good against down, okay? So what I mean by down is icing. So he's on the side, come set the straight, you're there, okay? So it's not so good if you're already bottled up, okay? So you gotta have some movement first to get into it. But you guys have all seen it, all right? Just for the 10% of you that have it. If we turn down the screen and we attack baseline, all right? On the back side, the bottom guy hammers screens for the top, for the middle guy. And then you turn and you get this guy, all right? And you're flying at the same time, okay? So again, you're going to the baseline. Sorry. So he's coming out of the corner to get you and you're running the corner. All right, so here's how we would get to it. All right, just as an example. Give me five guys out here. Uh, let's have a big ball up here. All right, come on. Let's have you start up here with the ball, okay? So we're gonna crack for you coming back to the ball. We're gonna crack for you on the back side. All right, so let's run pistol. This is probably the most popular play in the NBA playbook. Pistol, throw it ahead, all right? You go put your head in, uh, in the paint. Just get in the paint. Go hit for him. Stop right there. That's it. Right. Not too deep. Not too deep. All right, down it. Go. All right, come back. Come get him. All right, you come get him. All right, what are you doing on the back side? Hammer and crack it out the back. Okay, do it again. Do it again. All right, so this is just the way we you get to crack. All right, you're probably going to have to work to get open. I don't know if they deny or not. Go ahead, hit him. Just go high speed. Go, a down to go, turn it down, come back and get him. All right, and usually, again, if you've got a good ball handling, if you get a step, it's going to create some help, so somebody's going to be open. The next evolution of it, let me be you. Five minutes, go again. All right, starting here. Just go high speed. All right, go. The next evolution is, all right, when he turns it down, I come here, 
get ready to switch, so I slip. All right? So, again, all that stuff is better the more pace and the more movement you have. Um, any of our play diagrams, we can send to you through Deshaun, so hit us if you need anything. And uh, I'll stop there and answer any questions about pick and rolls, uh, anything we do, defense, offense, pressing, culture, anything. Oh, Pat, you talking about the coaching social, I know.